This engraving is from a French book of 1780 by the female alchemist Sabine Stuart de Chevalier, whose title can be rendered in English as A Philosophical Discourse on the Three Principles Animal, Vegetable and Mineral or the key to the philosophical sanctuary. This book contains a three-page explanation of the emblem, which will be the basis for the commentary presented here. We are shown a chemical laboratory set in the garden of the Hesperides. In this garden we see the tree of life with the golden apples that it produces, which are used to relieve the suffering of the masses of unfortunate people. These golden apples are a symbol of the universal medicine or the drinkable gold that heals all illnesses and prolongs life. This garden is watered by the beneficial waters of the philosophical stream. In this laboratory there is a library that contains the most precious books of the philosophers so as to instruct those to whom God grants the inestimable gift of this science. On the back of the books about the celestial science, which concern the operations of alchemy, we see the seven planets. In this library and laboratory is a Benedictine monk seated on a stool, who appears astonished by the woman who cultivates this sublime science. As he is sitting waiting, she arrives from the garden of the Hesperides and presents this famous and modest monk with a crown of gold enriched with precious stones with the attributes of royalty. But the more this monk appears to want to refuse the distinction of royalty, the more this lady invites and presses him to take the scepter and the diadem that she presents to him. She does this so that he might appear displayed to the world in a way appropriate to his true state, since finally by her studies she has penetrated the mystery of the transmutation and the emblems which he had hidden for such a long time. Behind him we see another Benedictine monk with a handkerchief in his hand, weeping for the loss of his brother monk, that is to say, Basil Valentine, who, by his piety and his science, was made the ornament of his order. Outside this laboratory, which is a temple of the philosophers, where they work to develop the miracles of nature, we see a labyrinth which, according to the idea of the philosophers, serves to indicate all the difficulties that present themselves in the operations of alchemy and the magnum opus. This indicates how difficult it is to find their way out of this labyrinth if they enter without having the right principles. In a similar way that Ariadne's thread provided by Daedalus, leads one through the labyrinth, we will find in Sabine Stewart's text the true course, and that it is necessary to be guided directly by a philosopher who made the work himself. This is what Morien assures us in his discourse with King Khalid. All around this labyrinth we see the waters of the philosophical stream which come from a mountain whose summit is lost in the high clouds. Rain from the south points to this mountain. Hermes' bird appears in the air above the tree of life. Next to Basil Valentine is a furnace on which is placed an alchemical flask, at the bottom of which we see two human figures and a third in a neck above. Basil Valentine was examining this with admiration when he was surprised by the lady, for he did not expect that she had obtained through her research the real key to the philosophical sanctuary that is so difficult to find. This lady, to gain the philosopher's confidence, immediately explained to him the work that he meditated in secret. She told him that what she saw happening in the precious flask that was on her Athenor meant that the solution of the work was being achieved. According to the writings of the philosophers, who never stated anything contrary to their stone, because it is a unique subject, this lady again told the philosopher that she had been surprised in her contemplation while she was joining the slave with his fragrant sister, 
to realise that they had to perform between them the work of the sages. Because as soon as the white woman is married with the red husband, immediately, by a mutual and true love, they kiss and unite very closely. Then they dissolve themselves, and as the process develops, they become one body, uniting the two things that they were initially. We see the three flowers coming out of the neck of this alchemical vessel. The lady tells us that the philosophers say that there are three perfect colours, from which several others proceed. The first is black, the second is white, and the third is red. She said that there are several other colours that appear often before the white, but they told us that it was not necessary to make hard work of this. Then the necessary conjunction of the two bodies is itself made, because if he had made the stone only from one of these two bodies, this could never give the necessary tincture. Therefore the conjoining of the two bodies is absolutely necessary to complete the work. The philosopher said that the wind carried the stone in its belly or womb. One must know that wind is air, air is life, life is the soul, which means the oil and the water of the philosophers.